September 11, 2001, changed America and the United States Fire Service forever. In the days, months, and years after the attack, Americans witnessed dramatic changes to how we protect ourselves as a nation. The dynamic capabilities of the fire service became front page news. Our fire service transformed into an all hazards response system integrated with other emergency response agencies nationwide. Hi, I'm Ed Mazoulis, Sedona Fire District Fire Chief. This Sunday, September 11th, 2022, Sedona Fire will have a brief sunrise remembrance ceremony at our 9-11 memorial located at Sedona Fire Station 6. Please feel free to join us in honoring those we lost. As a reminder, our memorial is open and available to the public year-round. The following is an honorable video that captured our regional public safety organizations honoring those we lost on the 20th anniversary of that tragic day. Welcome to this year's September 11th Day of Remembrance Ceremony. My name is Dave Soto, Sedona Fire District's Governing Board Chair, and I'll be your host for today's memorial. We begin our ceremony with a presentation of colors by the Sedona Verde Valley Firefighters Honor Guard. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The ringing of the bells and a moment of silence. The tradition of ringing of the bells at a firefighter's funeral signifies their last alarm. Stretches back more than 200 years. Generations ago, the bell would ring at the beginning and at the end of a shift. The bell alerts the firefighters to an emergency call. And the bell also rings at the conclusion of the emergency. A moment of silence will follow to honor those emergency responders who never returned, who gave their all so others may live. Our honor guard will now sound the ringing of the bells, three groups of three bells each. Thank you. The tragic events that took place in New York, Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and at the Pentagon on September 11, 2001, changed our lives and the world forever. Our national security is stronger than ever, and we cannot take our personal safety for granted. Even today, our community has changed because of a new threat, an invisible entity that has swept the world 
affecting us all. So much so that today's observance of our day of remembrance is being presented for the social media to assure we are safe as possible and can be viewed from the sanctity of our own homes. Yes, our world has changed, but as with the tragic events from 9-11, with all of the lives lost, we stand as a united people together and observe this special day to ensure those loved ones are never forgotten and will be remembered forever. I'd like to introduce our first speaker. He was a New York Port Authority officer, a current Sedona City Council member, and was the committee chair that brought a part of the World Trade Center building to Sedona, Mr. Scott Chaplin. Thank you, Dave. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for watching. This year, I wish we could all be in person, but unfortunately, we can't. On the morning of September 11th, 2001, at 0846 hours New York time, within 102 minutes, we lost almost 3,000 souls and a world-class icon, the World Trade Center. Most will never forget the destruction. They may have rebuilt the World Trade Center, but the Twin Towers will live on as an icon for a memory that we hopefully will never forget. Every year since we've dedicated this amazing memorial, I speak about the 343 firefighters and 71 law enforcement officers. Many don't realize that another law enforcement officer who died while on board United Airlines Flight 93 crashed into an open field near Shanksville, Pennsylvania. Let's also not forget the 55 military personnel who died at the Pentagon in Arlington, Virginia. Today, I'd like to remind everyone of some staggering numbers that we should also never forget. 1,402 people died at or above the floors of impact in the North Tower. Hundreds were killed instantly by the impact, while a remainder of the fatalities were trapped above the impact zone and died after the towers collapsed. Although a few people would subsequently be found alive in the rubble following the collapse of the towers, none of these individuals were above the impact zone. An additional 24 people remain listed as missing today. 614 people were killed at or above the floors of impact on the South Tower. An additional 11 people were killed in the attacks are known to have been killed below the impact zone after the United Airlines Flight 175 struck the South Tower. The 9-11 Commission notes that this fact strongly indicates that evacuation uh, at the impact zones was very successful. A USA Today report estimates that approximately 200 people perished inside the elevators, while only 21 escaped the elevators. Many elevators did not plunge, but were destroyed by the crash and subsequent fire or were stranded in the shafts themselves. A locking mechanism prevented escapees and rescuers from opening the doors on the stranded elevators. One survivor recounted having to pry open a narrow gap between the doors of the elevator to escape after utilizing the stairs. Before the Twin Towers collapsed, an estimated 200 people fell to their death from the burning towers landing on the streets and rooftops of the adjacent buildings hundreds of feet below at a speed of almost 150 miles an hour, sufficient to cause instantaneous death upon impact, but insufficient to cause unconsciousness uh, throughout the actual fall. The jumpers' death certificates state the cause of death, blunt force trauma due to homicide. Let's not forget the souls who died at the Pentagon. 125 people working at the Pentagon were killed and those lost lives include uh, all walks of the military. And on the four uh, aircraft that hit the towers and were involved even in, in Pennsylvania and the Pentagon, 265 fatalities on board those planes. During the attacks and afterwards, there was a large amount of toxic dust, debris, and ash that centralized around ground zero and created long-term health problems. 
toxic materials such as asbestos, lead, and mercury were in the air, and many victims and first responders did not wear respirators. It was reported in 2018 that at least 15 FBI agents had died from cancer due to their roles in the aftermath of the investigation of the attack. Further, a medical director of the World Trade Center Health Program at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York reported in 2018 that approximately 10,000 first responders and others who were at ground zero have developed a cancer as a result of this devastation. More than 2,000 have died due to 9-11 related injuries. The Uniform Firefighters Association of Greater New York also reported 170 deaths of firefighters due to 9-11 related illnesses, and that roughly one in eight firefighters who were at ground zero have developed cancer. At least 221 police officers have died in the years since 2011 from illnesses related as well. As of September 11, 2012, a total of 2,753 deaths certificates have been filed related to the attacks. Of those, 58% were forensically identified from recovered physical remains. May we all always remember and never forget 9-11-2001. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Jablow. Our next speaker, Chief of Police for the City of Sedona, who is responsible for keeping us safe and secure around the clock, Police Chief Charles Houston. Thank you, Dave. It's an honor to be here today. On the morning of September 11, 2001, terrorists attacked our country by crashing two commercial airlines into the World Trade Center. Many of us can recall specifically where we were and what we were doing when this horrific attack took place. These are memories etched into our minds that will never be forgotten. Over 2,900 deaths are attributed to the attacks on 9-11. Of those, 403 first responders paid the ultimate sacrifice as a result of 9-11. To this day, first responders and other brave persons who worked frantically to rescue people from the rubble are dying as a result of cancer and other illnesses associated with exposure to hazardous materials at ground zero. The impacts of 9-11 continue. As a police officer in Sacramento, California, on and subsequent to 9-11, I remember clearly the intense commitment of our nation to bring any involved terrorists to justice and to protect our country from any further attacks. Everyone was working together. 9-11 galvanized our country as Americans, regardless of political affiliation or any other individual or group differences. We came together as one, sharing a common goal and purpose. While I will never forget the tragic loss of life and devastation caused as a result of 9-11, I will also always remember our nation coming together as one United States of America. This memory is significant and should serve as a powerful reminder of our ability to come together as one nation, especially during times of crisis, such as what we are currently experiencing in our country. We are truly stronger together, clearly evidenced by our response as Americans to 9-11. We are fortunate to have a piece of the World Trade Center on display here at Fire Station 6 in Sedona. This piece of metal should be holding up a building in New York City is our everlasting reminder to the attacks of 9-11. We must never forget. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Our final speaker, our very own Fire Chief for the Sedona Fire District, who is charged to mitigate every emergency in our time of need, Chief John Trotwine.
Thank you, Dave. And we do want to thank you for joining us this morning for this moment just to reflect really on the events and what that means to us uh, individually and as a country. It really is hard to believe that it has been 19 years since we all witnessed the horrific events of September 11, 2001. We know that on that day, 19 militants associated with the Islamic extremist group Al-Qaeda hijacked four airplanes and carried out suicide attacks against targets in the United States. The Twin Towers of the World Trade Center in New York the Pentagon outside Washington, D.C., and a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, became the location of tremendous destruction and loss of American life. The September 11 attacks not only became the single deadliest terrorist attack in human history, they were also the deadliest incident ever for firefighters as well as law enforcement officers in the United States. In New York alone, we lost 343 firefighters and 71 law enforcement officers at the World Trade Centers. The impact of that day was significant. The events of that day affected individuals, families, our communities, regions, the entire country. It also had significant ramifications for firefighters, police officers, and first responders. The extensive destruction and loss of life put in motion an enormous effort by the United States to combat terrorism, both abroad and at home. Leaders implemented improvements to safety and security at home, adding mitigating and responding to acts of terrorism to the first responders' mission. Additional training, equipment, and improved capability and capacity to mitigate domestic terrorism became the day-to-day -day part of the mission of fire, police, and first responders agencies all over the United States. So today, as we pause, as we reflect, as we contemplate the events of September 11, 2001, let us remember the citizens, the soldiers, the firefighters, the police officers, and re first responders that lost their lives on that day. May our thoughts and prayers be with them and their families. May our thoughts and prayers also be with the soldiers, firefighters, police officers, and first responders that day after day, at great personal sacrifice, provide for our safety and security. May we truly be thankful and grateful, and may we never forget. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. In closing, I'd like to thank the members of the Sedona Fire District's Governing Board and all members district-wide for their support of the Fire Chief to assemble this 9-11 Day of Remembrance ceremony. The Sedona Verde Valley Firefighters Honor Guard for the presentation of colors and the ringing of the bells. Our guest speakers for their words of kindness and comfort. But above all, let us not forget the many lives lost during that tragic September 11th day back in 2001, in which firefighters, paramedics, law enforcement officers, civilians and military personnel perished. We are charged to tell the story of 9-11 to our children and grandchildren of all those lost, to be remembered forever and never forgotten. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity to share our 9-11 Day of Remembrance ceremony with you. God bless and have a good day.